Okay, for this job, we're working on uh, Chapter 6, Exercise 1. So we're continuing the theme of projecting 3D elements, starting with one basic sketch that gives us everything we need. And as we progress, instead of redrawing, we're going to essentially copy, project 3D elements onto our current sketch plane. And uh, uh, just extrude each extracted element individually. Okay, so I'll come here and make a new part. And, you know, we make the parts a good idea to label it this time. So I'll go chapter 6. This is exercise, so we'll do EX1. And, of course, put your name on there if you want to do that. Whatever naming convention you use, stick to it. All right, great. So we're going to do this as if it's being machined, right? So do it on the XY plane, top down. And so if you look at the exercises, you have um, figure... 6-120 consisting of a section view and uh, front view of the object so w when I look at this the first thing I want to do the most important shapes I see are the two circular elements on the left and right side of the part and I look at them and I can kind of see that they're arranged aligned to the horizontal absolute axis so I'm just going to do that first I'm going to start with a series of circles here I'll just draw this off to the left here immediately after drawing the circle I'm going to lock down its size with it the diameter value. So this guy should be 66. And you have to fit all in here. And yeah, we're a little bit out of scale here, so I'll just move over to the side. You can, by the way, you can turn on your grid. You know, it's it's set to 10 millimeter increments. So this will give you a better indicator as to what size we're dealing with here. So I've got one circle uh, diameter of 66. And, you know, for good measure, I can create an axis line that's coincident to the center point of the circle that is also going to be coincident to the horizontal absolute axis. And I'll just end it there. So what I'm going to do here is do the outer circle, the one that's got the two tangent lines on the right. I'll do the outer diameter. This is going to be an arc when we're done with this. So we'll do a radius dimension of 16. All right. And now the next most important thing when I look at this is the distance between the two. And they don't give us all the information, so it doesn't matter. We can still work on this anyway. Um, some things I want to do to tidy this up. I just want to take, you know, I'll make a decision. I'll make sure that the center point of the circle is coincident to the origin. Now, I've got a little bug here in my particular install of Katia in Windows 10. Remember, normally we would go here, do constraints to define the dialog box. You see it doesn't pop up. If you ever run into that situation, just control select the two items you want to use to apply your constraint. Run a dimension constraint, but right click and any sort of logical geometrical conditions you can apply to the two elements you just selected will pop up. In this case, I want the center point of the circle coincident to the origin. So I'll select coincidence, and there you go. Distance between the first circle and the second circle at this point is a variable. I'll just move over to the left. Uh, the next most important thing when I look at the reference image is that uh, to the left side of the arc on the right, in our control image, there's a vertical line distance of 32 from the center point of a circle. So that circle is actually going to be a hole. Now I'm just going to do it all in this sketch. I'm going to create the hole. Normally I would do the hole as a hole feature, but because we're practicing our sketching, I'm going to create this hole as a sketch with a diameter value of 16. And I'm going to use that center point of the circle to help establish the rest of our drawing. When I look at this, the next most important thing to do is a vertical line to the left of those two circles. Uh, and it's going to, it needs to be centered up over the horizontal absolute axis. So I've invoked the horizontal, the line tool. And I'm going to come here to sketch tools. Again, make sure you have your sketch tools open. So you go to view, toolbars, sketch tools. Okay. Let's tidy this up a little bit here. Okay. Make sure that's turned on. This will pop up. When we engage our line tool, make sure you use the symmetrical extension option. Extend our line right there. And we're going to apply a distance value between the center point of the circle and that line value of 32. Okay. And uh, the next most important thing is 
you know, the top and bottom of these lines are connected to the circle with a series of tangent lines. So what I'm going to do is just move my mouse to the upper portion of the circle, get this little registration mark that pops up. That means if I left click and draw a line, of course, without symmetrical extension mode turned on, and I let the uh, line drawing tool snap to a horizontal condition, it gives us a tangency symbol, the two bars that are connecting the edge of the line to the edge of the circle. That's what we want. So I'll just draw these two lines here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is kind of tidy this up. I'm going to take these two points and make them coincident. First, I mean, because of the bug I have in my system, I'm going to hit Constraint, but I'll right-click and do Coincidence. And now I kind of lose the horizontal condition on this line. I'll just take this line. And what I want to do... Right-click, start with the dimension, right-click, and that's it, horizontal. Same thing with this guy. Start with the dimension, right-click, horizontal. Just delete that value. Yeah, I want to apply the numerical value. What you need to do is, if you've got this bug in your system, first apply the dimension. I'm not really applying it. I'm kind of just activating the dimension tool, and then I'm right-clicking and switching to horizontal. Actually, let's do... not horizontal measure direction. Let's see. Delete this. Click on the line. Just set it to horizontal, not horizontal measure direction. Okay, and then we'll take these two points. Again, same thing. I'm so used to using constraints to find a dialog box. It's a hard habit to kick. So I'm going to control select these two elements. Go here to constraint. It's going to try and give us a distance. We'll swap, we'll swap to coincidence. And there you go. I mean, so we're getting there, right? We're building out the most major, major elements being the circles on the left and right side of the object. And, you know, while I'm here, I'll just go ahead on and create the interior circle for the shape on the left. So I just draw a circle uh, and then define it with a diameter value on the inside. Value of 40. Okay, so the next big thing we need to do is a couple of lines that occur on the top and bottom half of this part. And this is where a lot of folks make a mistake. They kind of, when they do this drawing, they think they need to go and do, you know, there's a, a little foot on the left side, radius of 30. People try and do that at the sketch level. That's best done at the part design level using the fillet feature. So I'm going to show you how you can do this really quick uh, and be able to control it. First order business to do these top and bottom lines is to just grab the line tool, connect to the upper end point of this symmetrical line we did, and just place it, place it there. All right? We're not doing anything else. What we're going to do now is mirror this line over. We're going to select the line and mirror it about the horizontal absolute axis. And then we're going to come here and drive it with a angle value by using the dimension tool. So in the control art, they give us a value of 7 as the angle between these two guys. Okay, And that's it. So now if I ever want to change the angle, it's actually pretty easy to do this. Uh, what some folks do is they'll do 3.5 on the between the upper edge and the horizontal line, and then 3.5 angle value between the bottom edge and the horizontal line. Yes, you could do that, but... If you draw one line, mirror it over, and then use the angle value to drive the two lines about the symmetry line with, with this angle value, it's a bit more efficient. I kind of like doing it this way. All right, so that's pretty good. Now we're in a position where we can start to kind of define things. Now, if I look at this, the next big feature we've got to create is a slot feature, or as what Katia calls, an uh, elongated hole. So let's just draw the elongated hole. That needs to be coincident to the horizontal absolute axis. So we'll just draw it. They do give us a radius value, so whilst I'm here, I'm going to press tab to go to the radius indicator and the sketch tools, and I'm going to type in, let's see, oh, look at that. They don't give us a radius value. Imagine that. It's hilarious. i just type in 5 for now because they kind of screwed up here. It's probably wrong. Let me try 10. Yeah, so this, this book, you know, from version to version, it gets some errors here. So that's a 2x and again, 2 times indicator with a radius value, but the radi radius value isn't given. From experience, I believe this is 10. Right, actually, let's make it somewhere in between, so 7. That's a variable, unfortunately. It's kind of made a mistake on that. But what 
they do give us is the distance between the center point of the circles on the left to the center point of the first arc on the left side of the elongated hole and the distance between the start and end of the arcs for the elongated hole. So they're giving us information in terms of horizontal measure direction to position the circles, the slot, and the circles and tangent lands on the right relative to another. So that's pretty neat. So we can start dialing in that information. So I'll take a measurement here from the origin point to the center point of the first arc on the left. Dial that into 53. And then there's another horizontal measure direction, or another horizontal measure from the first arc to the second arc. Distance of 90. And then we've got yet another one from... Oh, okay, I covered that already. Uh, from the center point of this whole feature here to the symmetrical extension line we did, value of 32. But what we need is a distance between the first hole here on the left to the second hole here on the right. And that's given in the section view. So I'll just go over from there to here. Value of 99, uh, what is it, 199. Okay. So now I'll bring this value down to 7. I just changed the value to 14 to kind of show you guys that it's now driven by one angle value about the two lines, mirrored about the symmetry line. Well, we can bring that down to 7. It needs to be back down to 7. Not 77. 7. Okay? So, yeah, we're getting there. What we need to do is... Now, some folks make this mistake. They do a, they connect lines with a coincidence. They take a co coincidence from the point to the edge, and then they do a little fillet. Don't do that. Just take this point, grab this circle by dimension, and then swap to coincidence. And we'll handle that fillet at the very end when we do the fillet feature inside part design, right? So here's the base sketch of everything we need. I'm just going to take inventory here and make sure everything's okay. Always double check your measurements, right? Okay, all right. So they don't give us... Yeah, the, I gave seven, which is right. I mean, that's, there's a distance value here between these two guys that they give us, and that winds up being the radius. 14, right? So when you dimension in between a top, between two tangent lines connected to an arc, the distance of 14 will give you a radius of 7 on the arc. Okay? That's why they didn't give us that value. Okay, pretty neat. All right, happy with this. We're going to exit Sketcher. And so again, we're continuing this theme where we're just creating one detailed sketch and copying the elements we need time and time again to create the rest of the part. So if you look at figure 6-19, 6-119, excuse me, we'll see that the circles on the left side are, are extruded or padded one value. This bar section in the middle is extruded yet another value. And then you have this other connector on the right consisting of the circles and tangent lines extruded yet another set of values, and it's got an additional cut. So we're going to create all those different features based on this sketch. We're going to repeat the process of creating a sketch in the YZ plane, excuse me, in the XY plane. Instead of redrawing all, all those elements, I'm just going to control select the two circles. We're going to work on our first extrusion. So we're going to do project 3D elements. We're going to go to insert, operation, 3D geometry, project 3D elements. Right? Remember the projected geometry comes in as yellow. To isolate these two guys, we're going to control select them. I'm going to insert. Operation, 3D Geometry, Isolate. We'll exit Sketcher. And if you just want to take inventory of what's going on here, we've got the sketch we just projected and the original sketch. If you just want to work on these two circles, because, you know, logic being that we're going to extrude them separately and maybe the, having the original sketch visible, visible at all times kind of confuses you, you can do that. You can kind of hide it if you want. You can right-click and select Hide and then just concentrate on this guy. And what we want to do is extrude him. The extrusion value is in the section view. Right? And we're we're going to extrude this mirrored extent. Remember, everything we build here is uh, built from the origin, and we extrude out mirrored extent. So everything is wind up centered up over the origin as best we can. So we're going to come here. Um, we're going to set this to 16 and hit a mirrored extent because the total depth value would be 32. Okay? I'll bring back 
3D uh, sketch by right-clicking and invoking Hide Show. I'll go into Sketcher in the XY plane. And we're just going to grab the elements for the bar in the middle. Now we're going to project some of these elements. We're going to isolate them. We're going to do some additional trimming. So I've got all these guys selected. Remember, I made a new sketch on the same plane we were working on. I'm going to insert operation project through the elements and then I'll go to insert isolate and again you know to kind of take inventory of what's on the current sketch plane when we project elements onto the current sketch plane they're always going to be drawn a little bolder than the other sketches you've drawn so if you look here at this line we projected it we projected this line it's a bit thicker than the other lines you see adjacent to it if you just want to focus on what we've projected here you can come back here to the tree and hide your previous work. So we're just dealing with what we projected. Now if you look at the control art image, right, we've already gone ahead and padded out this 3D feature. Right? I'll hide that. But we just want to concentrate on the bar in the middle. We don't actually need to create another circle. We don't need to extrude another circle. So we're going to actually trim it away and we just be left with the bar in the center. We'll do that by invoking I'll go here to, to uh, normal view, I'll invoke quick trim, and click on this part of the circle, the other half of the circle, because we don't need it. We just need this bar in the center. I'll exit Sketcher. I'll pad this mirrored extent. The overall depth is 16. We're going to do 8 to either side. Hit OK. Wake this back up by going to Hide Show, and now we've got two features there. All right. So we're getting there. Uh, what I want to do now is work on the last part, which is the circles with the two tangent lines that form this third extrusion. So I'll wake up this drawing. I'll go back into Sketcher and the XY plane. I'm going to control select the items I want to extrude. Go to Insert, Operation, 3D Geometry, Project. Whilst those guys are still selected, I'll go to Isolate. And to make life a little bit easier, a little easier on the eyes and the brain, I will hide everything else and just concentrate on what we're working on. Well, I want to extrude this outer shape. I don't need this inner arc here, so I'm going to trim that away. I'll select Quick Trim once. Get rid of it. Exit Sketcher. I'll Control Select all these elements. Make them visible. Okay, I have to make things a little bit easier to work on here. I'm going to hide the original sketch and just concentrate on what we want to extrude. So we want to extrude this shape here. They give us a total extrusion depth of 70. All right, you do mirror extent and do 70 divided by 2. All right, there you go. So we're almost there. There's just one pretty big feature. And again, you know. For guys that lo are looking at the uh, control image and see that there's a fillet here, we're going to do it at the end. We're going to use the fillet feature here in part design. So a couple of these fillets we do at the end are actually done in part design. You don't have to do everything at the sketch level. It's really not an efficient way to model. When you have uh, a fillet on a hard surface edge, the best way to handle that is not at the sketch level. You handle it at the part design level. Uh, it's a little bit easier for the computer to process and it's a bit more of an efficient way of working. Okay, so what we're going to do is go into Sketcher on the ZX plane here, the side plane, relative to this part. And what I'm going to do is create the shape. Uh, I'm going to flip this around just so I match the orientation of the control image. We need to create that cut shape. And so the cut shape can be done with a centered rectangle. And I'll just go here, move my mouse till the uh, inference line locks onto the horizontal absolute axis. You can see that here. If you look at the horizontal absolute axis, we've kind of got a lock here. And I'll just draw any old rectangle. I don't care about the size just yet. Uh, it is. It does give us a vertical measured direction between the top and bottom edge, a value of 50. Okay, and then, yeah, we need to get this edge here coincident to the right edge of this shape, but, you know, we can actually take, you know, this edge and project it, but there's one thing you can't do. If I tumble around in 3D here, the edge that we see, we're in the side view, 
is an edge that would be derived from a curved surface and we can't exactly uh, extrude that here you know this edge here there's a, it's actually not an edge we can't select it it's here on a curved surface and there's a limitation you can't extrude that you can't project that particular edge onto uh, a sketch plane so there's a workaround for that what we can do is extract a horizontal edge and we'll just use that as the reference to create the position for this edge so I'm going to take that edge go to insert operation 3d geometry project and then I'll take that same edge isolate I'll take that edge and I'll set it in construction mode and so that it doesn't move around I will fix it okay so it's locked in it's not going anywhere and now we'll just take this edge and this point and if I make those two guys coincident to one another this edge will be lined up to this edge here the curved surface and that's what we want so I'll take this apply a dimension constraint but right click right click and do coincidence all right so yeah that's not working what I need to do is undo that let me take this point my constraint right click one sec press the escape twice to get rid of that click on this point try and constrain it to here let's see yeah, so what because I don't have access to constraints defined in dialog box I need a way to constrain this and I can't so this is specific to my machine I kind of little bug here that doesn't allow me to take this point and fix it let's see if I could do that no. <coughs> Let me take these two points. Yeah, it lets me coincide. Okay, now it works. Now it's coinciding. Okay. So what did I do wrong here? It's probably the way I selected it. So I want to take this point and make it coincident to this guy. So I'll select this edge first and this point. Okay, I see what the problem is. I need to select this point first. It works with from two. So I select the point first. Go to distance and then go to coincidence. And now, because I selected the point first, the line now moves relative to the point. The line is now coincident to that point. If you do the opposite, uh, the point will actually move relative to the line. So it's little things that pop up get to you. Now I'm dealing with this because I have I don't have the ability to do the fixed constraint by just selecting a point and going to constraints to find a dialog box. You guys probably you're probably not going to run into that. All right, so all that was just to get these two lines situated so I can do a distance value between the front, between the left and right of that rectangle, distance of 38. All right, that's looking fairly decent. I'm going to ex exit that. Do extrude, mirrored extent, and just give yourself a value that clears either side. In my case, it's 35. There you go. And so you have the rest of this are a series of fillets that we can do here. I can grab a fillet here. If you look in figure 6-120, there's a fillet indicated radius of 6. And then another fillet indicated here that is in 6-20 in the top view. And that is going to be Engage the fillet tool, grab my two edges, and that is going to be radius of 30. And we'll hide the original, hide all the sketches actually. And there's our part. Again, the concept here is that we're starting with one sketch. I'll just hide everything and kind of go back to what we started with. We can focus on that a second. So, so you start with one sketch and you project all the portions of your sketch you need onto the same default plane we're working on. So you wind up with multiple sketches and each region is extruded to what it needs to be. Okay, so I'll turn off this original sketch and I'll just turn on the 3D features and we can see what we've got. Okay, that's how you'd go about creating that part.